For the past couple of weeks, we've been celebrating the 15th anniversary of the International Space Station. Back in November of 1998, the Russians launched Zarya, the first piece of the International Space Station. And a couple of weeks later, that was followed by Unity. That was the first U.S. piece of the International Space Station. The shuttle was Endeavour that took it up. The mission was STS-88. We are happy now to be joined by Bob Cabana, the current director of the Kennedy Space Center down in Florida, who just so happens to be the commander of that mission. So, Bob, welcome. Let's talk about what you remember about that uh, particular uh, mission, which was a pretty historic. Oh, Josh, it, it was awesome. You know, I, I think back to the evening of November 20th, we had the whole crew over to our house for uh, dinner and dessert, and we were watching uh, NASA TV, watching the launch of Zarya on the proton rocket from Baikonur uh, with great anticipation because we knew that once Zarya was safely on orbit, we were going to be able to launch a couple weeks later. And so we were all really glad to see uh, Zarya make it safely to space. Then we got ready for, uh, for our flight and uh, we continued training and we got down to the Cape and the, uh, the first night uh, the weather wasn't that great, it was raining, uh, we had a problem starting one of the APUs and we counted down to 18 seconds and didn't go. And it, of course the crew was disappointed but you know in retrospect things just weren't going smoothly that night and we went back to crew quarters and uh, a great story. My daughter and I are, are Wizard of Oz aficionados. And right before we went into quarantine, they re-released the Wizard of Oz, uh, totally restored. And she and I went to see it. And uh, it, it was just cool because that next day after we didn't launch, they had a picture of Endeavor sitting on the launch pad with this beautiful rainbow over it. And it was, ended up in the paper the next day. Yeah. And uh, that night we went out and the weather was great. And we went through the whole launch count and everything was just perfect. And, uh, and we launched, got safely to orbit. And the next morning, our wake up music uh, was uh, Judy Garland singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And I always tell folks, somewhere over the rainbow, dreams come true because we launched over that rainbow and it was definitely a, a dream flight from start to finish. Everything just went flawlessly. Now, whenever you got up in space, these, you know, we talk about this a lot, these two pieces had never gone together. They, they, they'd never been even on the same side of the planet, but they went together pretty flawlessly. Were you guys nervous at all about actually attaching the two pieces of the space station? Was there any trepidation or fear about it at all? Sure, absolutely. I mean, we had a number of challenges. I mean, uh, the first of which was the uh, software for the space station. We spent hours out at Sonny Carter testing the software, the Boeing facility and uh, at NASA's uh, software lab there. And uh, then, you know, the original philosophy on the space station was ship and shoot, ship it to the Cape and shoot it to space, uh, no testing. And we pushed for and got uh, the MEIT test at the Cape, the Mission Essential Integration Test, where we used emulators for the FGB and continued to test the software with the real hardware at the Cape. And we found a number of problems. And so the testing that we did there ensured our success on orbit. Uh, we also had issues with how we aligned uh, the FGB with uh, Unity. Uh, once Nancy pulled it, you know, Unity out, we got it safely attached to the orbiter docking station, fired the jets and brought it together. But lifting the FGB up on top of uh, Unity, it was almost at the full reach of the arm and we didn't have any way to properly align it other than some camera views that weren't as precise as we would have liked, but we practiced in the simulator. Um, we had the space vision system uh, that we used and through all that data we got everything aligned and were able to dock it. But uh, on the day that we fired up the computers we were using our laptops from the aft flight deck to send the commands to the space station to get everything operable and uh, Sergey Kriklov and I were sending the commands and I'll tell you nobody was more surprised than me when we sent the commands and everything worked perfect. All the <laughs> software, everything, it just all the displays, it all worked and uh, it's a testament to the testing that went into it uh, prior to getting those two pieces together in space. Uh, the team just did a, a phenomenal job and I think you know when you consider you got Japan, the United States, the European Space Agency and all its partners, Canada, Russia, all this hardware being built from around the world coming together in space for the very first time and having everything operate perfectly. What a testament to the team in the testing uh, that we do. It's just phenomenal. There's a lot of questions about who would be the first to go inside the newly minted International Space Station <laughs> at the point in time. You guys kind of did something a little bit different that was very uh, symbolic of the international partnership. Talk about that uh, with you and Sergey. Well, I, in fact, that was a big media buzz before we launched. I kept getting asked, who's going to be the first one inside the space station? And I wouldn't tell anybody. I didn't even tell the crew. 
And on ingress day, uh, as we went through all the procedures and we got to the point where we opened the hatch, I waved Sergey forward. And uh, through all the hatches, as we went into Unity and into the FGB, uh, Sergey and I entered side by side. It was uh, an international space station. It was a, an American and a Russian module. And I felt it really important that we enter as an international crew, not as any one uh, country. And I think it, it set the example for how we operate on space station even today. I mean, we have all our partners working together as one up there. And it's a model for how we're going to explore when we go beyond planet Earth. I think we have learned so much working together. And, and when we explore beyond planet Earth, you know, it's not any one country that should leave planet Earth, but we should leave as the people from planet Earth. And I think the space station has just been a, a tremendous model for how we work together. Last question for you. What's your reaction whenever you look at it now? I mean, this thing weighs almost a million pounds. It's enormous. Uh, it, it's grown incredibly now that we've sort of finished assembly. Now it's moved into the science era and the research era. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on it now with where it is? Well, I mean, first off, uh, I went, I watched our post-flight crew movie video the other day, about 30 minutes long. And it, what great memories it brought back, all the challenges and stuff. And I'll, I'll share one more story in the end here. But uh, at the end of it, you know, there's this picture of Unity and Zarya floating in space together, the birth of the International Space Station, and then it shifts to a computer animation, and it shows the assembly sequence, all the modules coming together in this video that's a computer animation. And we did that. What was a computer animation 15 years ago, it's reality on orbit today. I mean, it's just a phenomenal complex. All those modules uh, all have come together, work perfectly. You know, the wall of EVA that we used to talk about, we're never going to be able to surmount this. It's just going to be too challenging. Look at all the EVAs we did, spacewalks, assembling the space station, and how important it was to have humans tackle the problems that arose as we were out there. But they all went perfectly. You know, there were some hiccups along the way, but because of the team and our ability as humans to overcome and adapt, we met all those challenges, we corrected the problems, we have a working space station on orbit that is just a tremendous scientific research and engineering facility. You know, I, I truly believe it's a stepping stone to exploration beyond planet Earth. We are going to prove the systems we need for long duration space flight away from planet Earth on the International Space Station. We are going to learn about how the human body behaves for an expanded extended period of time in a microgravity environment aboard the International Space Station. The science that's coming from it is phenomenal and even greater things are going to come. I, I would give anything to be able to go back there. I think one of the neatest things right now on the space station, and it, it's the cupola. To be able to look down on the Earth from inside that cupola and just watch it go by. What a tremendous view. Uh, what a unique opportunity that is because I, I tell you there's nothing more special than watching the Earth go by while you're uh, orbiting it from a couple hundred miles high.